Education reform sounds like a great idea. Who could object to improving education, building better schools? But education reform in practice leaves some observers underwhelmed. Count among them Robert Pondicio, senior fellow at the Thomas B. Fordham Institute. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So education reform, you've actually written a whole column on this talk <laughs> about, about education reform sort of losing its way. What do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, I feel like I've written almost nothing but this in the last year or so. I feel like I'm becoming a bit of a broken record. I mean, let me preface this by saying, look, I consider myself an ed reformer, or at least I hope my reform credentials are in good order. I like, you know, uh, choice and charters and accountability and testing just fine. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm also a teacher. Uh, that's really how I kind of self-identify, as it were, in this work. I tend to be the guy when those conversations happen about choice and charters and accountability and teacher quality. I say, um, can we talk about what the kids are doing all day? Because that matters too. And, and I think that gets a little bit lost in, in education conversations. Um, uh, sorry, this is, I'm going to answer your question soon, but it's, but it's discursive. Um, if you think about the logic of the classic ed reform playbook uh, in test-driven accountability, that, uh, the, the notion that's predicated on, right, is that, well, schools know what to do. We only need to hold them accountable for doing it. Uh, that's why we test, and if you're good, then we let you open more charters, or we praise you, or we reward you, and if you're no good, then we shut you down or counsel you out of the business. Makes sense, right? Well, because I've been a teacher for so long, I tend to say, wait a minute, where, where'd you get this idea that we know what to do and we just need to either have our butts kicked or be praised and rewarded for doing it? Um, that's not what's going on inside of a lot of schools. So there's, there's an internal logic problem there. And, and I think, you know, 20, 25 years into this ed reform, experiment. I don't want to be, you know, painted with too broad of a brush, but I think it's been a mixed bag. I mean, if you are, I'm an inner city school teacher. That's my background. I'd much rather be a low income kid of color in a place like Newark or New Orleans or New York City, where I've taught uh, today than 30 years ago. Uh, but that's not the same thing as education reform has, has created this rising tide that has lifted all boats. Uh, it has been a very mixed blessing. And a lot of parents complain about the, the deleterious effects of testing and test prep and accountability. And they're not wrong. So that, that's in, 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 in sum. I gave you a complicated answer because it's a complicated issue. Yeah, is one of the problems that people latch on to these various reforms that think, well, if we just do this, sure. this is going to work. And yeah, they don't. Where's that easy button? Yeah. I know it's around here <laughs> exactly. somewhere. Exactly. Right. So, so is that something that's hard to, to help people surmount? That you can't just say more charter schools, more choice, more testing. There needs to be follow up, and it's it's not easy. Well, it's the the reason I, I tend to focus in the work and writing that I do on on educational practice. In other words, what the curriculum, pedagogy, what are kids doing all day? Uh, because again, accountability works when that works. Uh, so you know, at the again, at the risk of painting with too broad of a brush, my 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 um, lament is that if we'd spent the last twenty or thirty years trying to improve teaching and learning educational practice, uh, we'd probably be a little bit further along than we are right now. We are chatting with Robert Pondicio, who is a senior fellow at the Thomas B. Fordham Institute. So you've identified a problem with the reform itself. What do we do now? What do we? So, yeah. so if we see this, what do oh, we do? How much time do we have? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do think that the the and, and let me you know if, let, lest I give the impression that I'm anti-reform, I'm not. I'm you know again my my credentials are in good order, uh, but I think it's a question of where we focus our energies. Uh, again, the 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 the, 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 the unambiguous success of ed reform so far are inner city charter schools. Um, but that's not the same thing, again, as having created a rising tide. So if we, if we focus on teaching and learning, on if, if that really good burst of energy, because that's been an unambiguous good thing, you know, the, 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 there's just the amount of, of airtime, so to speak, that we're giving to education, um, you know, going back to Teach for America and charter schools and whatnot, that's a very good thing. If we had applied that energy that, that we've put into testing and accountability into improving curriculum and instruction, training teachers better, um, giving them the why, so to speak, as to what we're doing, I think we would be further along. So it's not a question of, um, you know, policy doesn't matter, accountability doesn't matter. It's you have to be very, very careful about what you're incentivizing. And you have to be very clear on the fact that if teachers, and this is going to sound like I'm being an apologist for bad teaching, I'm not. Um, 
if you're under the impression that teachers know what to do, you're mistaken. Um, you know, it's one of the first, I, I was a mid-career switcher. I started teaching at age almost 40. So I was untainted by, by ed school and you know, uh, new you know, uh, progressive notions of, of, of educational practice. And it was a bit of a mystery to me, like, oh, well, well you know, this is not how I learn, but what do I, you know, what do I know? I been, haven't been in an elementary school since I was a student. So they must know something. It took me a long time to really gain an appreciation uh, for how little, uh, and not because people are poor, poorly intended, uh, just because we have some unusual notions about what good teaching and learning looks like. And, and much of the energy in the reform movement has not been on that at all. It's been about testing and accountability, et cetera. So, you know, and again, I'm ranting here, but, but um, my, my point is that if we spend that energy trying to improve the product as, a po pros, as opposed to assuming the product is fine and now we just need to measure the output, we'd be further along. Where does the type of reform that you're focusing on work best. <laughs> inside Obviously, my head. <laughs> yes, uh, other, than, other than inside your head. I mean, right. I, I, I'm guessing this is not going to be something that Washington is going to dictate yeah, to everyone. No. Is it something more appropriate at local level, state sure, level? Where? Sure. Look, I, I'm not even sure there's a policy play here, if I'm going to be brutally honest about it. Um, you know, uh, I can point to a lot of examples of where policy as well intended at it, as it might be, has really gotten in the way. Uh, you know, maybe a subject for another time, but uh, we could look at literacy and the incentives that that, sh uh, that that annual reading tests send to teachers about how they should teach kids to read. And I could at deathless length uh, explain to you how that's really creating, almost incentivizing bad practice. So uh, there's two things I would argue that have to happen. And you know, this is my third broad brush alert. Uh, you know, one, we have to re really rethink the messages that we're sending to teachers and schools through short-term incentives, through test-driven accountability. I'm not anti-test. Let me make that really, really clear. I want to know how my kid's are doing. I want to know how your kid's are doing. I want to know how schools and districts are doing. Uh, but that's not the same thing as we want you to get test scores up right now because that's more complicated. Um, so that, that, that's the policy play is to really rethink the, what we're telling teachers functionally to do. Um, to your very good point, can that happen uh, at the at the national level? No, absolutely not. Uh, can it happen on the state level? Well, it depends on what the policy is. Um, I'm look. I'm very optimistic about charter schools. I've taught in charter schools. I'm 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 staunchly pro charter. Um, as long as the policy conditions are in place that allow you know, genuine innovation, genuine experimentation, and smart teaching and learning, uh, then I think you've got something. Um, but you know, there's almost like a perfect storm that's conspired against that. Uh, you know, we could talk about ed school at length and the way I was taught to teach literacy to kids. That does, you know, every kid I've taught has been a low-income kid of color. Many of the ideas that I, I, I now make fun of them uh, simply are demonstrably bad. That's got to stop. Um, you know, we need to create the conditions that allow teachers and schools to make long-term investments, so to speak, in background knowledge. I'm an unapologetic disciple of E.D. Hirsch Jr., who you might know of, who wrote Cultural Literacy. Uh, I always say he was the one guy whose uh, work described what I was seeing in my South Bronx classroom every day. So you've got to create the conditions that allow for that patient investment in um, background knowledge and vocabulary, and don't just you know put a dipstick into the engine once a year and say, oh, how are you doing? No, not enough progress since last year. Because as, as Hirsch himself says, language is a slow-growing slow plant. It may not respond to short-term incentives. Um, I keep giving you way too long-winded answers to your very, very good questions. Um, but you know the answer to every question is going to be, well, it's complicated because all of this is complicated.